The gram formula mass, GFM, of a substance is known as the mass of one mole. Not the mole that you'd find in the ground, but meaning one of that particular substance that we look at when we work out the formula. The relative atomic mass of selected elements can be found on page 7 of the National 5 SQA data booklet. These can be used to calculate the gram formula mass of a substance. This lesson focuses on working out the gram formula mass for one mole of a formula for a compound which ends in ide. Remember the D stands for double, which means it's only made up of two different elements. There are a couple of rules that we have to follow. Number one, we have to write down the formula for the compound using SVSDF or prefix formula and put a box around it. Now, the formula will usually be given in the past paper questions, but I'm going to remind you and recap how to work out the formula. Number two, we have to write a list of the elements that we have from the formula. Three, identify how many of each element we have by looking at the number directly after the chemical symbol. Remember that if there is no number after the chemical symbol, it just means one. We then use page seven of our data booklet to identify the relative atomic mass of that element and multiply it by how many you have. At the end, we have to add up the total mass and this equals the GFM. This first example, we want to calculate the gram formula mass for sodium chloride. It ends in ide, which means it's made up of two different elements. We start off with our SVSDF. Chemical symbol for sodium is Na. It's found in group one, valency one. Chlorine has the chemical symbol Cl. It's found in group seven, valency one. We swap the numbers over. Highest number both can be divided by is one, which means the chemical formula is NaCl. Now, to work out the gram formula mass, we have to take down each of our elements. The first one that we have is sodium, which is Na. We don't have a number directly after the chemical symbol, which tells us we have one. And using page seven of our chemistry data booklet, we can see that the relative atomic mass is 23. One times 23 equals 23. Chlorine has a chemical symbol Cl. We don't have a number after the formula, which tells us we have one. Using page seven of our data booklet, we can find the relative atomic mass as 35.5. One times 35.5 equals 35.5. When we add up these two numbers, we get a GFM of 58.5 grams. In this example, we want to calculate the gram formula mass for magnesium chloride. We start off with our SVSDF, the symbol for magnesium, Mg, found in group 2, valency 2. Chlorine has a chemical symbol Cl, it's found in group 7, valency 1. We swap the valencies over, highest number both can be divided by, to keep it a whole number, is 1, which means the chemical symbol this time is Mg. How many have we got? We've got one, but we don't write ones. Cl2. So to work out the gram formula mass, we have to take down each of the elements. The symbol for magnesium is Mg. We don't have a number after the chemical symbol, which tells us we have one. When we use page seven of our data booklet, we can see the relative atomic mass is 24.5. One times 24.5 equals 24.5. The symbol for chlorine is Cl. How many do we have in the formula? We have two. Using page seven, we can see that the relative atomic mass is 35.5. Two times 35.5 equals 71. When we add these two numbers up, we get a gram formula mass of 95.5 grams. We want to calculate the gram formula mass for aluminium oxide. We start with our SVSDF, 
the chemical symbol for aluminium is Al. It's found in group 3, valency 3. Oxygen has a symbol O. It's found in group 6, valency 2. We swap the numbers over. Highest number both can be divided by is 1, which means our chemical formula is Al2O3. Again, to work out the gram formula mass, we have to take down each of the elements and identify how many we have. The chemical symbol for aluminium is Al. How many do we have in the formula? We have two. Using page seven of our data booklet, we can see that the relative atomic mass of aluminium is 27. Two times 27 equals 54. The symbol for oxygen is O. How many have we got in the formula? We have three. We look up the relative atomic mass, which is 16. 3 times 16 equals 48. When we add these two numbers up, we get a gram formula mass of 102 grams. This is the last example we're going to work through where you have to use SVSDF to get the formula. We're wanting to calculate the gram formula mass for hydrogen oxide. We start off with our SVSDF, symbol for hydrogen is H, it's found in group 1, valency 1. Oxygen, symbol O, found in group 6, valency 2. We swap the numbers over, highest number they can both be divided by is 1, which means that the chemical formula is H2O. The gram formula mass, we take down our elements, symbol for hydrogen is H. How many have we got in the formula? We've got two. We look up page seven, the relative atomic mass is one. Two times one equals two. Oxygen, symbol O. How many have we got in the formula? There's no number after it, which means we've only got one. We look up the relative atomic mass using page seven, which is 16. 1 times 16 equals 16. When we add these two numbers up, we get a gram formula mass of 18 grams. In this example, we want to calculate the gram formula mass for nitrogen trifluoride. This example is a little bit different because we have a prefix. When we have prefix formula, we just say what we see. We've got the chemical symbol for nitrogen as N. There's no prefix before that, which tells us we only have one, but we don't write ones, so we don't write anything after the chemical symbol. Fluorine, the chemical symbol, is F, and we can see that we've got the prefix tri, which means we've got three. So the chemical formula for nitrogen trifluoride is NF3. How many nitrogens do we have in the formula? We have one, using page seven, we can see that the relative atomic mass is 14. 1 times 14 equals 14. Fluorine, the chemical symbol is F. How many do we have? We've got three. Using page seven, we look up the relative atomic mass, which is 19. Three times 19 equals 57. When we add these two values up, we get a gram formula mass of 71 grams. Calculate the gram formula mass for ethanol. The structure is given below. We're often asked to be able to write the chemical formula from a full structural formula or a picture of the molecule that we have. What we can see here is that we have two carbon atoms in the middle. So we've got the chemical symbol C and how many have we got? We've got two. Hydrogen, the chemical symbol is H. How many hydrogens have we got in this picture? We have six. And we have an oxygen atom, which has the chemical symbol O, but we've only got one, so we don't write any number after that. That means that our chemical formula is C2H6O. 
the chemical symbol for carbon is C. How many do we have in the formula? We have two. Using page seven, we can see that the relative atomic mass is 12. Two times 12 equals 24. Hydrogen has the symbol H. How many do we have in the formula? We've got six. Using page seven, we find the relative atomic mass as one. Six times one is six. Oxygen, we don't have a number after the chemical symbol, which tells us we have one. Using page seven, we find the relative atomic mass as 16. One times 16 equals 16. When we add all these numbers up, we get a gram formula mass of 46 grams. <laughs> I'm only going to go through one past paper question which focuses on calculating the gram formula mass for basic formula. This question is from the Intermediate 2, 2013, multiple choice 9. Which of the following substances has the smallest gram formula mass? To start with, what we would want to do is use page 7 of our chemistry data booklet to identify the relative atomic mass for each of the elements. Carbon has the relative atomic mass of 12. Hydrogen is 1. Oxygen is 16. And then 3. The next step is for the two formula of 12. And multiple choice answer A, B, C and D. And calculate the gram formula mass for each. A is carbon monoxide. Carbon, we've got 1 in the formula, 1 times 12 equals 12. Oxygen, we've got 1 in the formula, 1 times 16 equals 16. So therefore the GFM is 28 grams. B, we have carbon dioxide. How many carbons do we have in the formula? We have 1. 1 times 12 is 12. Oxygen, how many do we have in the formula? We have 2. 2 times 16 equals 32. When we add these up, we get a GFM of 44 grams. C, we have nitrogen. How many nitrogens do we have in the formula? We have 2. 2 times 14 equals 28. D, we have methane or carbon hydride. How many carbons have we got in the formula? We have 1. 1 times 12 equals 12. Hydrogen, we have 4. 4 times 1 equals 4, and therefore the GFM is 16. This question specifically asks for the smallest gram formula mass, which means the correct answer is... <laughs>